sat much as I am now on my sofa in 2008, 21st of April. Um, a friend invited police officers into my f flat to carry out a welfare check. They actually said that they were there with some other people who wanted to ask me some questions. Two doctors, Michael Crawford and Dr Vora, and then social worker, approved social worker Pat Dale. As I said, a section squad and giggled. Um, they said they were there to carry out an assessment under the one Mental Health Act. They had a 136 warrant, and that's why the police were there to support them. My friend was sat in the chair to the left of me. A police officer stood over me with his boot on my foot. They asked me if I'd mind answering questions. I said, I don't mind answering any questions. I have to let you know I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from the Royal Air Force. I'm currently feeling a little bit intimidated with a large number of people in my room and this officer standing on my foot. My answers will reflect the level of intimidation that I'm feeling. Just so you know. And the doctor turned to the sergeant and asked if some of his men could leave so they could get that clear answers from me without me feeling intimidated. The sergeant turned around and said, not unless he's in handcuffs. Now, without any prompting from the sergeant or any order being given to put me into handcuffs, the officer who was standing on my foot said to me, give me your hands. I said, but why? I haven't done anything to warrant being put in handcuffs. At this point, he grabbed my left hand. I had a dressing on my left hand, a white two-inch square white one. And he drove his thumb into the back of the dressing, centre of the dressing and into the wound in my hand, which caused my body to flinch, and he shouted, he's resisting. I was then pinned to my sofa like this, as I am sat now, two officers on my right arm and two officers on my left arm. The officer had shoved his thumb into my wound, then began to elbow strike me in the temple. And after each blow, my head going around like this, I said, you don't need to do that, officer. He did this six times. And then he stopped doing that, I think his elbow must have got sore because he started to crush my air windpipe at that point. And needing to breathe, I slid my right arm from under the two officers on the right and pulled his hand away from me so I could breathe. He screamed, you're not biting me, you little bastard, and pulled me in the face repeatedly. And then he shoved my head down like so. And I was struck twice more upon the back of the neck at the base of my skull, top of my spine. Uh, at which point I begged for my mum, 40 year old ex serviceman, former member of Her Majesty's Royal Air Force Mountain Rescue, hot refuels, tactical supply wing, begging for my mum. The beating was that severe. They put me into handcuffs and dragged me from my property and then dragged me to a local uh, mental health hospital and uh, locked me up. <laughs> I was never assessed, I was never given a chance to answer any questions, I was just brutally abused. The officer bragged outside to being qualified to instruct other officers in how to deal with people in these situations, which means in the court of law, using elbow strikes to the temple as a qualified instructor, he was attempting to murder me. His body is classed as a weapon and elbow strikes are death strikes. So make what you will of that. The chief constable who supplied the men to do this Stephen Finnegan of Lancashire Constabulary was given an OBE two years later when I was released from hospital. A nice little reward there for asking your men to try and murder a former, former member of the Royal Air Force, a veteran. The police can get away with murder and nobody for the last eight years has been prepared to protect my rights, my human rights, my rights under British law. As a former member of a Manchester's Air Force and a member of public, I'm not entitled, it would seem, to any protection. Even Amnesty International won't touch this. It seems the Charities Act prevents them from getting involved with any legalities with the British government. They can fight the Chinese government, but they won't fight the British government for people's human rights. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Who am I supposed to turn to for help when nobody will listen?